Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the man that some call America's first humorist. This would be Mark Twain, and I have five of his quotes up here. He is an incredibly quotable individual, he has tons of quotes out there. The first one is, the man who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read. He also says, be careful about reading health books, you may die of a misprint. Next is, don't go around saying the world owes you a living. The world owes you nothing. It was here first. This next one's my favorite one. Twain says, I did not attend his funeral, but I sent a nice letter saying I approved of it. And finally, Twain says, wrinkles should merely indicate where these smiles have been. This is incredibly fitting of the man who we call America's first humorist. On November 30th, 1835, Samuel Langhorne Clemens was born. Uh, he would eventually become known as Mark Twain, arguably America's most famous literary icon. Now, he was born in a town called Florida, Missouri, uh, but about four years after he was born in 1839, the Clemens family moved about 35 miles east to the town of Hannibal, which is on the banks of the Mississippi River. And this picture that you see in the bottom right is Mark Twain standing out in front of his childhood home. Uh, as a boy, he was still known as Samuel Clemens, and he was kept indoors for most of the first nine years of his life because of poor health. Uh, he would eventually grow out of his constant sickness, and he was able to attend a private school uh, in Hannibal. When he was 12... His father died of pneumonia, and at 13, uh, Clemens left school to become a printer's apprentice. After two years, he joined his brother's newspaper as a printer and an editorial assistant. Um, at the age of 17, he, event he, he left Hannibal for St. Louis, and while he was in St. Louis, he actually became a river pilot's apprentice, which means he was working on the Mississippi River. Uh, because the Mississippi trade was, because the Mississippi River trade was brought to an end by the Civil War, uh, he began working as a newspaper reporter. Now, Twain's life would change forever on November eighteenth of eighteen sixty-five. This was the day when his first short story, "The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County." Uh, was published in the New York Saturday Press, and this is the story that we will actually be reading in class. In 1876 and 1885, he published probably the two novels that he is most well known for. Those would be The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Now, the thing with Twain, you need to watch out for regional dialect. A regional dialect is the form of a language that can be heard in a specific geographical setting. And now I have a short video of Elijah Wood, who you would recognize as playing Frodo in The Lord of the Rings, and he's reading the beginning uh, of Huckleberry Finn. And see if you can pay attention to this regional dialect that Twain is trying to capture. about me without you have read a book by the name of the adventures of tom sawyer but that ain't no matter that book was made by mr mark twain and he told the truth mainly there was things which he stretched but mainly he told the truth that is nothing i never seen anybody but lied one time or another without it was aunt polly or the widow or maybe mary aunt polly tom's aunt polly she is and mary and the widow douglas is all told about in that book which is mostly a true book, with some stretchers, as I said before. Now, the way that that book winds up is this. Tom and me found the money that the robbers hid in the cave, and it made us rich. We got $6,000 apiece, all gold. It was an awful sight of money when it was piled up. Well, Judge Thatcher, he took it and put it out at interest, and it fetched us a dollar a day apiece, all the year round. More than a body could tell what to do with. The widow Douglas, she took me for her son, and allowed she would civilize me. But it was rough living in the house all the time, considering how dismal, regular, and decent the widow was in all her ways. And so when I couldn't stand it no longer, I lit out. I got into my old rags and my sugar hogshead again, 
and was free and satisfied. But Tom Sawyer, he hunted me up and said he was going to start a band of robbers, and I might join if I would go back to the widow and be respectable. So I went back. The widow, she cried over me and called me a poor lost lamb, and she called me a lot of other names too, but she never meant no harm by it. She put me in them new clothes again, and I couldn't do nothing but sweat and sweat and feel all cramped up. 